Have you ever visited a marina and checked out the masts sticking out like treetops? They all seem to look the same. The vast majority of masts you would see belong to monohulls. Monohull masts vary among each other, but there is a notable difference to the twin-hulled counterparts. In today's episode, we will go over some of the rig fundamentals you need to know and what sets them apart. We will discuss subjects such as four-stay tension, head sails, and reefing systems. Some of the alternative rigs such as the aero rig, unstayed masts, and wing sail will be touched on. In conclusion, we will talk about the future of multi-hull rigs. Hi, my name is Gregor Tarjan, owner and founder of Aero Yacht. In my three-decade career as a multi-hull broker and importer, I've sailed and encountered close to a thousand multi-hulls. The vast majority of these catamarans had a single mast and were sloop or cutter rigged. Most of you will probably appreciate some of the obvious differences between a catamaran and a monohull rig. But in this video, I will try to uncover some of the more lesser known truths. Firstly, a catamaran's mast is always deck stepped. There might be an odd boat out there with a mast that goes through the deck, but most end at the deck and are supported by a compression tube. The function of this sturdy post is to transfer the downward load into the bridge deck floor. To give you an example, our Mekonigy 60 catamaran, which is equipped with a hydraulic jack to tighten the rig, loads can be in the 30 ton range and beyond. Monohulls have keels to keep them upright, hence they have a deep bilge which is ideally suited to seat the bottom of the mast. The deck houses the so-called partners, which are braces that contain the mast. So the first fundamental difference is that monohull masts are keel-stepped, meaning they pass through the deck into the bottom of the boat, and catamaran masts are deck-stepped. The second fundamental difference is that because cats are wider than monohulls, the support base or staying angle of the shrouds holding the rig can be more efficient. This means that the shrouds can be moved slightly backwards in relationship to the mast and also act as a backstay. So effectively, they perform two functions. Not only do they keep the mast from folding over sideways, but also keep the rig from toppling forward. Since there is no backstay needed, catamarans can have fully battened sails with a large roach, which increases their sail area for a given mast height. The advantages are many. A simpler rig, a stronger, more sturdily stayed mast, more mainsail area and easier reefing. You will also notice that most multi-hull rigs are fractional rigs, meaning the shrouds attach below the mast top, about 70 to 90 percent of the mast height. This is also the place where the forward stay attaches, making four stays shorter than on a monohull and therefore also easier to manage their tension. Many of you will wonder, if there's no backstay, how do we adjust the forestay tension on a cat? This is the job of several players, of which the most important one is the main sheet and traveler combination. They act in unison on the mainsail leech, which in turn pulls the top of the mast back and at the same time pushes the center section of the mast forward. This effectively flattens the mainsail which is really what you want in a breeze, and conversely tightens the forestay. Catamaran rigs are simple structures. The single or twin shroud setup is responsible for keeping the mast up, and the intermediate's function is to keep the mast in column and control the bend. It is the engineer's task who, depending on the design envelope of the particular cat, determine the overall size of the sail plan and the right balance between factors such as mast section thickness to the number of spreaders supporting the mast. As multi-hull masts are different from monohull rigs, there are even greater nuances between various catamarans that are not immediately apparent. But fundamentally, they are simpler and easier to use and stronger. And the main key to this is the wide platform and staying base of a catamaran. I often get the question, why don't cats have more masts like some monohulls? The answer lies in two areas. Firstly, multi-hulls are more weight sensitive than monohulls, 
which means that if you add more masts, meaning more weight, their performance percentage drops more in relation to model hulls. Most of the time, the added sail area is not enough to compensate for this. Secondly, we like to keep things simple. Most cats are cruising boats handled by families with often only one operator. So taking care of only one mast and one mainsail is easier than two. Lastly, fast multi-hulls create enough apparent wind that they sail most of the time on a close reach or close to the wind. Typically, the most efficient rig for this type of sailing is the single mast. A catch or schooner rig would create too much windage. How about carbon versus aluminum? Well, we all know that carbon is sexier, lighter and stronger, but it is also much more expensive. For a racing cat or someone who is focused on performance, a carbon mast is a must. They are often a third of the weight of an aluminum mast. Also, many higher-end catamarans offer carbon rigs. Our range of Sun Reef yachts and McConaughey cats can be ordered with high modulus carbon rigs and Sun Reef even builds their own in their purpose-built 150 foot long oven. For the vast majority, the sturdy aluminum mast does just fine. With little maintenance, they have a very long shelf life and are perfect for the average cruising sailor. We briefly talked about the weight savings of carbon masts. Reducing the mast weight is very important as by reducing the center of gravity of the mast, you also reduce the pitching motion of the boat and thus improve the flow of air over the sails. This means that your cat will sail better and move less. Similar savings in weight aloft can be achieved by switching from a stainless rigging to a synthetic rigging, which is stronger and lighter. Bang for the buck, it is the best weight savings for your cat. So if you already have a multi-hull, look into changing out your shrouds to Kevlar or other appropriate aramid fiber rigging. Let's briefly touch on head sails. For your working sails, you basically have two choices, the self-tacking jib or the larger Genoa, which slightly overlaps the mast. This sail gives you more power and also creates a slot effect that funnels the air between the head sail and the main sail. The downside of the larger Genoa is handling, whereby the self-tacking jib only has one sheet, the Genoa has a leeward and a windward sheet, which both have to be dealt with when tacking. Also, the Genoa is not as efficient when reefed as its rolled luff creates more windage compared to the self-tacking jib. So depending on your sailing style and preference, choose the proper head sail if you have the choice. Main sheet systems on most cats consists of a long athwartship traveler which eliminates the need for a boom vang. They effectively, in combination with the main sheet, flatten and control the mainsail twist and shape. How about unstayed rigs on cats, meaning masts without shrouds? It has been tried on and off, but at the end of the day, not much has been gained. What you would save in shrouds, you would quickly make up in weight as mast partners would need to be massive and heavy, eliminating any advantages of an unstayed rig. Also, unstayed masts cannot be tuned very well, meaning if you cannot adjust and tighten the forestay, you cannot sail upwind well. Since fast cats rely on tight forestays, unstayed masts have become unattractive for these applications. So what will the future bring? Big question. I always say to my sailor friends, the one who comes up with the invention of a solid wing sail that is reefable, economical and reliable will revolutionize the sailing world. I've been trying myself to find a solution for the last 20 years and have not yet found the perfect system. Similarly to the aero rig that was invented two decades ago, several people have tried to come up with clever solutions of inflatable sails or flat battens that slide over a mast, mimicking a solid wing sail. But nothing has stuck so far. So, for any of you out there, young inventors, entrepreneurs, I would love to hear from you. Let's design an efficient wing sail which can be easily reefed. This single invention, I think, will greatly benefit us as sailors, just as foiling has taken over the sport. In conclusion, I'm here to assist you and give you my advice, whichever catamaran or rig you're considering. I hope that this episode offered some new insights and that you got some enjoyment of watching. 
A lot more information is in my books on catamarans and you can purchase them via Amazon and eBooks. If you want to follow more episodes of our mini series as they become available, please make sure to subscribe to our Aero Yacht channel so you don't miss any. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the water in a catamaran.